so my first property I bought, I just accepted an offer on it. And the guy was respond very responsive right away. Went out, met with him, and he just had one of those guys, he admitted, he's like, I have no business owning a house. He's a <laughs> big cash for the house and was so far behind on the maintenance. And, hmm. you know, talked about an offer and then he just went blank. Hmm. And he didn't seem upset about anything. And I, for a couple of weeks, I followed up on him, followed up, you know, not, not like every other day. I would mm -hmm. shoot a text or shoot a voicemail uh, and, just, and he just disappeared. And all of a sudden, you know, he came back about a month later, a month and a half later, out of nowhere. Yep. It's like, well, are you still interested in buying the house? So I said, yeah, we'll, I'll stop over and talk to you. You know, I was like, you know, I don't want to get stuck with this thing for too long. And he said, you know, let's do it. You know, did some pretty updates were pretty easy on there and cleared mm -hmm. about 30,000 on that, on that one deal. Hey y'all, Trevor here. With Carrie, I've uh, come at you with another episode of the Carrie Cast, and I've got uh, an awesome guest on today. And uh, Troy, I'm going to introduce you to Troy here in a second. But um, the reason I wanted to do this episode is because, you know, as we've grown this company, it's been really, really fun just seeing all the all the variety of of members that we work with. People who've been in business for decades, people who are brand new, people who have high volume businesses, the biggest investors in the country switch over to Carrot, and also people who are just now starting and trying to figure out the game. And throughout working with thousands and thousands of customers, um, we really have found and we built into the system kind of, hey, here's, here's the model. If you execute this model, it works. Um, the part that we haven't been able to pull out of the equation is how to get um, a clients to execute the model. And so is a few weeks back, uh, a few weeks back, uh, Joaquin on my team hit me up and he's like, Hey, Trevor, you need to check this out. And Troy, uh, who I'm going to introduce here in a second, sent us an email that we will talk about in a second. That's going to directly apply to anybody that's a carrot member or even not a carrot member that is not getting the results you want to get online yet because Troy was experiencing it. He'll tell his journey, how he's about to cancel carrot and then how it flipped around and what he did. And uh, it was really cool. I'm like, dude, let's get young. Cause there's so many people to be inspired by you making that shift um, and making stuff happen. So welcome on the carrot cast, Troy Owen. Thank you for having me, dude. So let's set a little bit of context here. Um, let people know where you're from, what, you know, where you do business in, and then kind of just the, the, the broad, the broad strokes of what do you do in business? I know mean, you've got the agent side, you've got the investor side, but kind of introduce people to what you do and who you are. Absolutely. Well, I work in Milwaukee. So my primary market is Milwaukee County. So the greater Milwaukee mm -hmm. area, um, venture out of Milwaukee, but there's enough here that I don't have to mm -hmm. very often to keep the pipeline full. So I work primarily with investor clients um, because I'm an investor myself. I started investing 10 years ago mm. and I started with the flipping side of things probably four years ago. It was like 2014 when I first dipped my toes in the water. Mm -hmm. And so I use the, the flipping to produce cash to buy more long-term holds. Yep. And then I work with other investors and I own property so I can relate to the struggles and the challenges that they have and try to help them out any way I can. And I try to be a resource for them as much as I can as well. And you know, ends up with a lot of repeat clients. I love it. Yeah. And, and so I want, want to make sure everyone heard what he said there. If you're in the Milwaukee area and you're an investor, um, make sure to reach out to Troy. So Troy, um, I know you've got your carrot sites and we'll kind of dive into the carrot side here in a second, but you've also got TroyOwen.com. Is that the spot people will go to if they're looking to buy investment properties uh, that you can help them with on the agent side of things? Yes, correct. That has all my cool. contact when they can reach out to me. You know, whenever Sweet. I love it. So everyone go to TroyOwen.com if you're in the Milwaukee area or if you're looking to buy properties there. Um, and also there, is, I want to make sure to serve you here, dude. So uh, are there certain types of properties that you kind of specialize in that are there a lot of your investor clients um, are buying? Are they buy and hold? Are there certain kind of areas in town? Kind of what do you specialize in that people can go to you for help with? Yeah, it's anything non-invest, non-owner occupied. So Okay. From you know, newer investors starting with duplexes to guys looking to do buy large apartment buildings or do 1031 exchanges, things of that nature. So I love it. Small and big. Dude, I love it, man. So everyone go there if you're in the Milwaukee area, uh, work with Troy. So on the investment side of things, so this, this, like I so said, this, this is where it got interesting for us is um, I pulled up Troy's site when I got that email and uh, sell sellmyhomemilwaukee.com. Awesome domain name, by the way. Awesome domain name, dude. That's a killer one. 
Um, so sell my home, Milwaukee.com. And it re- really isn't customized much. I mean, you uploaded some, some different photos and, and uh, a little bit of the content's customized. Um, it's using one of our you know, older designs and all those kinds of things where the, the cool thing about it is now, you know, it converts, it converts visitors to leads. But Troy, why don't you kind of tell the story that you told us when you sent that email, you said you're about to cancel and I'm going to toss it over to you now. Uh, what, what happened? Why were you about to cancel? And then what shift did you make? Uh, and what results have you seen since? All right. Yeah. I, I love the whole concept of carrot. And I think I started in early 2016 and it was mm-hmm. at the end of last year, it was around, you know, it was December of last year. And I was like, you know what? I'm not getting anything from the site. And I was just irritated. And yep. I actually looked up canceling and I thought about it nice, but then I kind of looked at myself. I'm like, you know what? I'm not doing anything to drive the traffic to my website. Yep. It's there, but just because you put up a website doesn't mean people are going to show up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I started thinking about that. I'm like, you know what? I haven't really, I can't say it doesn't work because I haven't done everything I need to do. Mm. And I decided to look into marketing, what I was going to do for marketing, who I was going to hire. It took a, it took a while, went through a few people and I settled on AdWords nerds and they've been mm-hmm. absolutely fantastic for me. Awesome. And within you know, the first three month trial after we got started, you know, leads were already coming in, <clears throat> properties were already under contract and it's been a steady flow ever since. So <clears throat> I'm very glad I didn't cancel. And <laughs> you know, now I'm driving traffic. It's doing everything I wanted it to. And like Trevor mentioned, I haven't customized my site as nearly as much as I should, but it's hasn't stopped the leads from coming in. It, exactly. And, and, and perfect in order to do business and to get deals done. Dude, that's the thing, right? Like that's something that, that I trumpet all the time is progress, not perfection. And, uh, and I think that's where a lot of people get stuck is number one, a lot of people get stuck in trying to make their site perfect. Um, and that, that's kind of one of the biggest objections we'll get people tossing at us. It's like, well, I need to make it look different than everyone else. And there's a lot of other carrot members in my area. I'm like, well, yeah, that's true. And you, and you can do that. But the most important thing is having the fundamentals of what's going to make a website convert well. And the fundamentals are built out the second you launch your carrot site, and then you can refine them from there. And so what you did, you said, okay, I'm going to take one thing at a time. Um, having a high converting website is number one. Having traffic is number number two, because you can send all the traffic you want to a low converting website. And you're going to be wasting money. We see that all the time where people can't get their website to work. They move over to carrot, customize it a little bit, and then all of a sudden their traffic works. So get a high converting website, number one, that's most important. And then number two is traffic. But then you can always refine your high converting website to make it stand out more to you, to make it, you know, uh, branded differently or different images and stuff like that. So I'm going to read, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to read the, you mind if I read the email that you sent me? No, it's fine. Cool. Uh, so he sent this email just, just recently he said, Hey, close my first property through carrot. Um, he said, Hey Trevor, I've had a carrot site since 2016 and I almost got rid of it last year because I had no leads. I thought further and realized I had not done anything to drive traffic to my site. Ended up hiring AdWords nerds, uh, like Troy mentioned, uh, while the cost was hard to stomach at first. I'm going to dig into that here in a bit. Uh, so while the cost is hard to stomach at first for a guy who hasn't done any marketing in the past, it's working. I closed four deals this past month, cleared about 50,000 bucks, purchased one other house and I'm expecting on an offer today on, or, or tomorrow on another one. Um, I thought I should let you know. And I love getting those emails, man, because like when, you, when you're in the trenches, what, whatever business you are, it doesn't matter. When, when you're in the trenches doing your work, um, having validation that what you're doing is making a difference is awesome. And it, it like continues to keep you charged. And we have something internally that we call the thread of awesomeness. Um, we use Slack. It's you know, a team communication tool. And we have this little channel and this little thread um, that's called the awesomeness channel. And so that's one of the things that our whole team, every single day, we're putting doses of awesomeness in there that, that we get from, from, from clients. We get them every single day, all the time. And it's so we can stay charged up about the reason, the people behind why we do what we do, because it's easy to go, let's look at the tool, let's look at the software, let's look at our marketing. It's like, no, I want to look at like Troy, the person behind the tool and how we're impacting him and his family and his life. So um, I want to toss it back over to you, man, and uh, dig into, you said, the, the cost was hard to stomach. Um, what were you kind of looking at? And it's not cheap to have someone manage your, your AdWords if, if you're doing it effectively. Then you've got the budget of it. What were you really looking at when you were looking at the, what kind of costs were you looking at and what made you finally take that leap of faith to do it? 
Well, I had <clears throat> some sources that I've been, so I hadn't done any marketing before this and mm-hmm. I had sources that were giving me leads, uh, enough leads, enough deals the last few years to more than enough to keep me busy. And a lot of those have dried up. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the bank's inventories have dried up and I had to find something else. So I was going from spending zero. I didn't, I was busy enough without the marketing and now you know, it was a bigger upfront cost, but mm-hmm. it doesn't take a lot, doesn't take a lot of deals and probably only takes one deal to really pay for it. So I'm like, you know what? It'd be crazy not to at least give it a try. Yep. I love it, dude. So what's, what's your average profit per deal that you're seeing from those pay-per-click deals and SEO deals? Uh, average, I'd say between eight and 10,000. Okay, cool. And then some smaller. Sweet. Do you know, do you know about what you're, I'm just trying to break down some numbers here. Cause what I want to do is get the math on the table so people can start to trust the math. Uh, the, the second, the second that, that we as, as, as marketers start to go with emotion in our marketing budgets is the second, like that's the second we lose. And I've done it too before where I talk with someone and they're like, Hey, it's probably going to be at least X amount of dollars to even get into this. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that seems like so much. But then when you pull back and do the math, like you said, it just makes sense. So What's you got your average profit per deal 10 to 15 K. Um, what do you know how many leads it takes you to close a deal through these marketing methods? I had a lead. It was slower at first and I was getting kind of feel for how I was going to handle things. And then I, I got more aggressive and more aggressive with the follow-up and mm-hmm. I just stayed on top of them. So early on, it was probably, you know, eight or 10 to one, roughly something like that. Okay. Now, I would say it's under, under five. I'm, I'm digging and scratching. We're going to find a way to make this work. I love it, man, dude. I, I was just, I just wrapped up a, a call. We're doing this, uh, this live summit in early January. Um, we'll start marketing it right after Christmas and uh, it's free. Uh, it's, it's awesome. And I've got Christina Krause uh, on there. A friend of mine, carrot customer crushes it. She's one of the biggest experts in direct mail in the country. And she's like, follow up is where it's at. Follow up is where even the big guys are letting it are, are letting deals crack, uh, slip through the cracks. Follow up's huge. Um, so leads per deal, I'm going to put one in 10 just for the conservative side of it. And then what, what do you, what are you willing to trade Troy? Like for a $15,000 profit, how much in marketing are you kind of usually allocating for a cost per deal? I think what I'm doing on pay-per-click, I think it's cost. I'm, uh, I'm doing 2000 a month. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, sure. Some markets you can get away with less and other markets that's not going to cut it. Mm-hmm. Yep. T- totally. And then with that 2k a month, are you, are you doing a deal a month? Are you doing multiple deals a month? Kind of what's that breaking? What's the cost per deal breaking down to cost per deal early on the cost per lead was coming in at like 3000, but it's picked up more leads and now I'm not solely relying on the pay-per-click leads. I'm starting to get, mm-hmm. some, you know, uh, SEO leads and that's, that's helping quite a bit. Even more, so my cost per lead is coming down and I had some great properties come through lately. Um, so my first property I bought, I just accepted an offer on it and I was so behind with my workers on other projects and rehabs that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I got put on the back shelf for a while. I just accepted an offer <laughs> on that uh, tonight. And Sweet man. Congrats. So paying for the marketing, I had a house come in and the guy was respond very responsive right away. Went out, met with him, and he just had one of those guys. He admitted he's like, "I have no business owning a house." He's a <laughs> big cash for the house, and was so far behind on the maintenance. And hmm. you know, talked about an offer, and then he just went blank. Hmm. And he didn't seem upset about anything. And I, for a couple of weeks, I followed up on him. Followed up, you know, not, not like every other day. I would mm-hmm. shoot a text or shoot a voicemail. Uh, and just and he just disappeared, and all of a sudden, you know, he came back about a month later, a month and a half later, out of nowhere. Yep. He's like, well, are you still interested in buying the house? So <laughs> I said, yeah, we'll, I'll stop over, talk to you. But the problem I drove on the way there, I noticed on about four blocks, all in the same street, five houses had popped up on the market. So oh uh, no, kidding! We talked about a different price, and you know, I was like, you know, I don't want to get stuck with this thing for too long. And he said, you know, let's do it. You know, did some pretty updates were pretty easy on there and cleared about 30,000 on that, on that one deal. Dude, that, that, that's amazing. So what did, did you dig in? What, I'm right there. Dude, I, I love it, man. I love it. What, what was his scenario? Like why, why did, did, did you kind of dig in? Why did he wait the month? Did, did another, did another investor um, not fall through on, on the deal? Did he have something happen? What was the deal there? No, he, was, 
he's actually in the hospital. He said for a, oh, really? a pneumonia for about a week and a half and then mm. work, he was traveling for work and just got put on the back burner. And then all of a sudden, mm. you know, everything calmed down in his life. And he decided to give me a call and see if I still want to do the deal. That's, a, that's such a big lesson there, everybody. Like rewind that and listen to it again, because what a lot of people are doing is they're, they're working their butts off to get these leads or they're spending money to get these leads. And then if someone goes dark or whatever, they're not following up. And Troy said like every few days, every couple of days, he was texting him and calling him. And that's what you got to do because what happens in our minds is, is sometimes we think, oh man, I'm bugging them. The reason they're not answering me back is because they don't want to hear from me. But it could be a scenario like that where whatever something happened you don't you don't know you know he wasn't upset in any in any way by you know what we talked about it was just life got mm -hmm. in the way and he came back to it so if, if you look if you look at that I'm, I'm making up stuff here so if you followed up every let's say three days it was about a month later you probably followed up eight to ten times you ended up uh profiting about 30 grand in the deal Dude, that's about three thousand to four thousand dollars a text message that you sent him. <laughs> Profits is what that is. Right. That's pretty darn good. Pretty darn good income right there, man. I love it. Um, so, so digging into some other things, you you hired a PPC management company, uh, the one that's in our marketplace. You you're spending about two thousand dollars a month in the actual ad costs. I'm assuming plus the management fee that they're right. that they're they're charging. Um, your cost per deal started out being about 3k a deal for a 10 to $15,000 deal, which is great. Like any, anybody would trade that even 3k for 10k. I would, um, for sure. And those, those numbers are getting better as your organic rankings are starting to pick up or not. I was looking in the back end of your carrot site a little bit ago and I saw organic, you have a Google search, Google search, Google search, PPC, Google search, a lot of Google searches popping in there. Um, and some things that we had talked about before getting on here, uh, we're going to work with you over the next couple of weeks just to tweak that side up, maybe get you over to the, cause you're on the advanced marketer plan right now. So we'll test out the, uh, the hemlock design, which you've got access to on the advanced marketer plan. And, uh, I, I, I haven't seen another one, um, recently in Milwaukee that's using that. There might be some, but that will help you stand out for sure. Uh, so dude, what, what are you going to do kind of leading into, into this year, into 2019? You'd mentioned those other lead sources were drying up because that's just market cycles change and you know, we're in a little bit of a shift. Uh, what are you going to do in general for your marketing? Are you doubling down online? Are you doing any other stuff offline this year? I'm going to double down on online and okay. do some mailing, direct mailing. I don't do a lot of that. Uh, mm -hmm. I've done in the past where it's been very targeted, very specific. Like people I couldn't track down on a, something I wanted to buy or I knew someone else wanted to buy. Yep. Found some deals that way, but I haven't done any larger direct mail campaign. So I'm going to, I'm going to test that for the Milwaukee market and see what happens. And cool. uh, might crank up my, my budgeting on the, on the pay-per-click and try to mm -hmm. try to increase the amount of leads any way I can. I, I love it, man. So it's, it's interesting when, when I'm, when I was writing down a bunch of stuff here and I want everyone to look at this. Okay. So I always talk about, I call, I call it the max cost per lead and max cost per deal calculation. And the first thing that I want everyone to do is write down your average profit per deal. So for, for Troy, you know, it was 10 to 15 K. I'm going to go with 15 K for this example. The next thing you do is write down your leads per deal. We'll, we'll link up the calculation uh, in the, in the show notes below this. Um, if you're listening to this on, on iTunes, go to carrotcast.com. Uh, carrotcast.com and then find this episode of Troy and we'll link it up in the show notes. But uh, leads per deal is next. Okay. His leads per deal is about one in 10. It's getting better now, uh, which is crazy, crazy cool. And then um, you, he's you're willing to trade about 3K max for, uh, for a deal. Um, usually what I do for uh, when I'm, when I'm directing people on the PPC side of things or paid traffic side of things, whether it's direct mail or, or online, is I always kind of figure out, you know, what's that amount that you would trade to get the 15 K usually it's about 25%, which that about works out to, um, some people go higher, which is fine too. It's just whatever your comfort zone is. Um, if you go way, way below 25% y'all, that's where it gets harder to then compete because you're, you're cutting off your marketing. Um, you're kind of cutting off your marketing at the knees. You're not giving yourself the act and the chance to really spend enough in the market to turn the deals. And you might as well burn your money at that, in the, at that point. So the three K is perfect. If you can get your deals for cheaper, awesome. That's even better. Um, but then to get my first deal, what, what, what I'll always do with our high end clients or anyone is I'm like, I, right, on the first deal, I'm probably going to ramp up my budget on that. I'm if, if my average profit deal is 15 K, I might be willing to spend six or seven to get the first deal. 
just to get my systems going, just to get my marketing going, hone it in, get that money. I'll, I'll bring in the 15 K, you know, get the six, you know, I replenished my coffers. Now I've got more money to put into marketing. And most people, they take the opposite approach. They take the, Hey, a deal's 15 K I'll put in one or two or maybe three. If I don't get a deal, I'll stop it. I'm like, I'm going to ramp it up. Uh, as long as you know, two things, you know, you're driving to a high converting website. If, if not, Stop your marketing, get the website, a high converting website. If you're on carrot, it's already there. You can just tweak it and add personalization to make it convert higher. And then number two, make sure that your AdWords campaigns being managed correctly. It's like, if you get those two things down, trust the math, you're, you're going to be rolling for and sure. Then look at it uh, and the cost per lead. You know, I wasn't breaking it down like that. I was, mm -hmm. I was looking at what was coming in and did it look like something was going to work because I knew the cost per lead would be significantly more early on in the first few months. Yep. I do some activity and that that came in. It didn't take all that long. It took a took a few weeks, but mm -hmm. it was worth it. Now more deals are coming in. I had some bigger deals and a higher quality quantity of deals come through. And yeah, that cost per lead is dropping down. That's exciting, man. Like I, I, I love hearing this kind of stuff. So uh, you mentioned kind of what you're doing for 2019 here, moving forward. And uh, I'm going to toss this over your way, man. And uh, there's so many people listening to this that either are carrot customers or they're not. And to me, it, it doesn't matter. It just matters on the mindset. And I want people to make a mindset shift here is, is you, you clearly made a decision, made a mindset shift when it wasn't working. Like you said, before you made a shift, have I truly given this the full chance? Right. Um, did, did you, so did, did you dive into some training that we had or whatever? How, how did you know what the steps were to get the traffic? Actually, I did, before I looked to hire somebody to do the work, I did the advanced marketer plan and yep. I could just see where this was going to go if I went the DIY route, um, mm -hmm. being with other things in life. I'm like, it's not going to get done the way it needs to get done. And I'm not going to be as diligent as I would like to be. So mm -hmm. I hired out and with the leads that came in. I mean, it's more than paid for that. So mm -hmm. it's totally worth it and it happened faster. <laughs> I love it, man. So if we, if we do, if we do the math here for people and I'm all, I'm all about ROI and I'm all about uh, just once again, removing emotion and making math kind of the, the game here. So he went from about ready to quit carrot, uh, which he would have then stopped his $150 a month payment. And and I think what most people think is I'm saving 150 bucks a month, right? I'm going to cancel the thing. I'm going to save 150 bucks a month. And if I still need a website, I'll go set up this other one over here. That's, you know, Wix or Weebly or Squarespace. It's cheap. It's not going to convert as well. That's for sure. If you send PPC traffic that it's, it's not going to work, but then I'm saving 115 bucks a month. So by you not canceling <laughs> to try to save 115 bucks a month, he ended up make, you making you over, over $50,000. And that, that's what I call phantom expenses is there's so many people, myself included in care, we have phantom expenses. We're always trying to find them and root them out, but we all have phantom expenses where it could be with that Troy's phantom expense was he's paying monthly for this thing, but he wasn't then investing the money that's going to get traffic to then make him money. Um, you could have a phantom expense y'all where you're driving traffic to a low converting website. You could have a phantom expense where you're trying to manage your own PPC, which is great. That's awesome. But maybe you're not managing it correctly. And um, you're not hopping on our coaching calls and asking our team to look at it for you, which we will on our PPC, our PPC uh, coaching calls. So make sure you're plugging those phantom expenses because the phantom expenses end up costing you way more than almost any expense that's actually hitting your credit card on a monthly basis. Um, and for Troy, if he would have canceled that, that phantom expense would have been 50 G plus, uh, whatever he's going to end up earning this next year. It's a big, man. So what, what advice would you, would you give someone who's kind of sitting on the sidelines right now? They're paying care monthly. Um, which, I mean, some people might go, well, what do you care, Trevor? You're making the money. That's not why, that's not why we started the company. We started the company so we can help people be successful and we can't be successful unless you are. But what, what, what would you suggest someone who's sitting there on the sidelines? They've got the site. Maybe they've dabbled in traffic or maybe they haven't done any. Uh, what kind of suggestion would you give them? Commit to finding a way to drive traffic to your website. Whether it's you or whether you hire it out, you have to drive traffic to the site. The mm -hmm. site, like you said, it does convert. I mean, it's proven that time and time again between this, between myself and the, all the other people down on the Caracast, we know it converts. Mm -hmm. But you have to get traffic to your website before you can experience any kind of return. 
Yep. Do whatever you have to do to get traps to your website. 100%. One kind of good analogy too that that helps some <clears throat> some other people that are more familiar with offline stuff that kind of helps them latch onto it is I'll say you, you can have the most amazing direct mail piece. Like you can have the best copywriter in the world write the best letter in the world and it's the best envelope that everyone's going to open it and all that. You order it, you pay the money to, to, to get it to your garage and it's sitting there in your garage. You're going, this is the best thing ever. And then it sits in your garage and you don't actually put the stamp on it, pay the money to get it mailed and get it and buy the list and get it to someone's front door. Only when you do that, can that direct mail piece work for you? And the internet's the same way is you've got to get people to it in some way, shape or form. There's a lot of, there's a lot of ways to get qualified people to it. Uh, one way is with paying for ads through Google, like Troy did or Bing or uh, paying for, for ads um, through Facebook. Uh, if you do it effectively or doing search engine optimization, ranking high in Google there, those are high, crazy high quality leads. Um, or if you just do offline, like Troy was mentioning, he's going to start doing some direct mail. What happens is people take out their cell phones. You know, we take out our cell phones and we Google the phone number that's on that direct mail piece to see who is this guy. Like, is he is he for real? Or we Google his name if it's on there. Or even if you're not including your URL on there at all, people are taking out their phones and they're researching you. So you need a high converting website to get them there and then convert them. So, man, Troy, I'm I'm just so pumped about what you've been doing, dude. And uh, and also kudos to you for for stepping out and sending the email to me. I, I was pumped to get it and made my day uh, in a big way. So I thank you. Absolutely. Big time. Dude, I, I need to get your mailing address. I want to send you some, some cool swag in the mail and uh, celebrate, celebrate the, these deals with you. And uh, dude, if there's anything we can do at all to help you out, like I said, we're going to connect with you to, to get the visual of your site, do a couple tweaks for you um, uh, and help, help boost that a little bit. I'm just pumped about your future with us. Thank you. As am I. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, everybody, if you're listening to this episode of the Carrot Cast and you're newer to Carrot or you're looking to join Carrot, or you've been with us for a while, like Troy was, and you're not getting the results you want. It's a it's a model, y'all. It's 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 a repeatable model. And uh, there was a guy who, like I said, did follow through and cancel the other day. And I read his thing, and he basically said, "I hop on the coaching calls and I go into your trainings." And he said, "It seems like it's all really repetitive." He's like, "You guys are just repeating the same thing over and over again." I go, because that's the model. That's what works. Like if we're repeating it over and over and over again, because it works, y'all like, yeah, there's, there's modifications. There's things we're going to innovate on and we innovate on things all the time, but this is the model. Don't try to, don't try to reinvent the wheel. It works. So if you hear me repeating stuff over and over and over again, it's because it works and just do it like Troy did. And, and then as markets shift or if, if something, if that starts to not work as well for you, then look at our, look at our more recent trainings or hop on a coaching call where we're going to teach you, okay, well, this thing shifted and this is why this isn't working as well now on Facebook ads. Now do this. Um, so just make sure to keep, uh, keep educating yourself after, after you, you implement. So I love it. I love it, man. Well, Troy, I appreciate that caddy, man. Um, we'll get your address, mailing address. Have an amazing Christmas and New Year's. Um, and once again, I appreciate you sending the email. If there's anything we can do, let us know. And this is going to inspire a lot of people. So um, it, it means a lot to me that you, you hopped on here and told your story. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, man. Have a good one. Thank you.